a Zinter lithium powered uh, 9 volt battery. And I'd like to thank Kim Sleep for sending this. He sent it a while ago, just getting around it now. I'll zoom down a bit now because uh, this is quite a small battery. But what we're going to do is we're going to test it and then we're going to take it to bits. The idea behind this is that it's got a built-in charging port, port and you can just plug USB lead in. And when you do that, the little red LED lights and it starts charging. And the advantage over traditional nickel metal halide or nickel cadmium versions of these is that this one puts out a fairly solid 9 volts or more over its full discharge. You do get... I'll just test this. 9.6 volts. You do get nickel metal hydride batteries, versions of these. And typically speaking, they're available in three flavors. Six cell, usually a stacked series of button cells inside. Uh, and that puts out about 7.2 volts. It's this uh, cheap version. Seven cell that puts out 8.4 volts and the eight cell which puts out 9.6 volts. And the slight downside to that is if you get eight cells, then fully charged, the initial voltage will be close to about 12 volts and it could damage some equipment. The reason they have that, that extra stack of cells is that some equipment just doesn't like the lower voltage of nickel metal hydride and will cut out and warn you that the battery's running low. So this sort of embraces that. It replaces the stack of cells with just one, I presume, in this. We're about to open and find out. The charging circuitry is built in, which is very handy, and it puts out a regulated, it uses a boost converter, I'm guessing, to put out a regulated 9 volt supply. Let's open it up. And to open it up, I'm seeing the case looks as though it's got plastic uh, two halves. Um, and this looks like it could be a label around the outside, or it could be heat shrink. Let's... Uh, Let's try it as heat shrink and try and peel it off. Is it adhesive? Oh, it's got a metalized backing. Things worthy of note. One item that could really benefit from stuff like this is a, a wireless microphone where they get through the 9 volt batteries. Rather than actually risk uh, losing a show, They'll quite often, the sound department will put a fresh battery in for just about every single show. This is proving quite difficult to get off. This is not heat shrink like I thought it was. I think it is just a sticky label. And they have to do that because uh, if the microphone goes in the middle of the show, they lose basically that microphone. It can be quite embarrassing for the sound department if a singer suddenly goes quiet or the microphone starts making loud popping modulating noises because of the low battery. The slight disadvantage of using the lithium cells in that type of system is that the older wireless microphones, two screws, I wasn't expecting two screws. Let's see if I can air. Uh, I thought it would just be held together by the tape. Uh, the These type of batteries with a switching conversion that steps the voltage up, I'm going to need a different screwdriver. One moment. They can cause noise, weird sort of whistling noises in the circuitry. Because the circuitry just isn't, designed it's expecting a traditional 9 volt battery that puts out nice smooth dc and when you put in something like this sometimes some of the switching noise comes through and it gets finds its way onto the audio uh, path let's see if one of these fits it nice that it actually screws together i like that let us unscrew it uh, what am i expecting the six pin charging circuit another little six pin boost circuit maybe not really sure and then as much lithium battery as they could fit in. Traditional nickel metal hydride batteries are about 200 to 280 milliamp hour. This one claims to be 400 milliamp hour. Oop. Okay, a big fat lithium cell as we'd expect. Uh, or is it a stack of two? It's a stack of two, but are they actually using them? In series or parallel? Oh, that's quite nice that the... the cap and the end just hinges down like this to the circuit board at the bottom here. Okay, right, I think it's time for a close-up of the circuitry and I'll also test this. Uh, although I see a stack here, well I've got two connections but that, uh, too, well, let's test that right now. Let's bring the meter in and see if it's using uh, two cells in series or parallel. I'm guessing that ultimately they wanted to squeeze, as, squeeze in as much as possible, so it may be two in parallel just to get the size and the thickness. So let's carefully probe on to there and there. 
The voltage is 3.78, that suggests that this is just two cells in parallel. Okay, one moment please, I'm going to reverse engineer this a bit. It has been explored, the data sheets wherever possible have been found, and it's time to take a look at this circuitry. I like it. It's divided, it, I mean it's so logical, it's divided right down the middle into the boost circuitry that steps the voltage up from the 3.7 volts average of the lithium cell to the 9 volts, and then it's got the battery protection chip and the battery charging chip, it's all absolutely logical. The only chip I couldn't actually track was this UB7QA. I did find a radio ham call sign for that, but uh, not the uh, chip I was looking for. But having said that, it's a fairly standard chip. I found one with a similar sort of topology, shall we, shall we say. Uh, things worthy of note, the battery, the battery connection and the output terminals go on the sort of like the long edge of the circuit board. So the battery negative is here, the battery positive is here, that's a lithium battery. And then the output negative is here and the output positive is here. Most of the back of the circuit board is a solid ground plane, as is this section coming through here, with the only uh, track on the back being from the battery positive, which is deliberately mounted right next to the, uh, the switching, the boost circuitry. Uh, that, that track then goes across over to here on the back for the charging circuitry and the protection circuitry. So... The arrangement of this, the design of it, it's got this lovely solid plastic case for a start and everything lays in quite logically. The wires fold down at the side and they run up the side of the lithium cells. Uh, so this folds down at the bottom here and then this swings up to the top with a little pillar at the top that helps keep them separate. Although there's also tape, a couple of layers of tape over the end of this. And a nice feature is that the lithium batteries, it's a stack of two 500 milliamp power cells to give a total of 1000 milliamp power, which is decent. But they've got a little designed plastic cup in here, designed to protect where those connections go in so they can't punch into the cells. It's very logical, it's very neat. It's a nice design. So let's start with the first section. Let's start with the charging section for the battery. There is no uh, protection in the battery for the cell itself, so that is mounted here. It's one standard, a very standard chip that has a couple of pins common to the uh, negative rail and then one going to the battery. And in the event of the battery voltage rising above 4.2 volts, this will potentially cut out. And if it goes too low, if it drops below the three volts too much, it will also cut out. So it's purely to protect the battery. There is a Decoupling capacitor in the vicinity, and there's a 100 ohm resistor, 10 one and 10 at the end of it, 10 and another zero at the end, so 100 ohms, and that's a very simple filter. I can bring this in and show you it, in fact. This is going to swamp out, that's all right, it's not swamping out now. Uh, so the circuitry here senses the voltage in the, the battery positive, and it does it via that resistor and with this decoupling capacitor, purely so that as there are spikes and surges on the battery, it uh, only sees an average value, so it can, you know, it doesn't false trip and cut out. But other than that, there are just two connections. There's the main circuit negative and there's a the battery negative, um, and it will break the connection to them. It's very, very simple. XB5350A. 5350A, that was the correct chip, that's nice. Next comes this, the 2YL6. Again, this is textbook. Uh, I'll brighten the image up again. This is the battery charging circuitry. It's got two resistors. One resistor is in series, this little red LED that lights up to show it's charging. It just goes out then to the charge. Another one, the 202, which means two zero and two zeros, uh, is a 2000 ohm resistor and that sets the current on the control pin of this chip and that is set to approximately 500 milliamps. I'll show you that afterwards. Uh, a couple of capacitors in the vicinity for again decoupling and stability on that. Let me see if I can find the charging chip. Here it is. I shall tame that down again. Uh, so the charging chip has the programming pin with that resistor. It connects, the output connects the battery and the input uh, comes with that uh, decoupling capacitor. There is effectively another decoupling capacitor on the output though for stability because they could fit it in as a nice design. Uh, then there's a resistor on that LED. Very, very straightforward, a very common chip. Next comes the 
output circuitry. So the output circuitry loads the coupling capacitors again. This one here is basically going to the battery positive from the lithium cell. And then this switches to the output. I'm going to have to actually find... I didn't find the data sheet I wanted, but I'll show you this one. Tame that down a little bit. So this one, the supply voltage comes in from the battery. It's got a decoupling capacitor. The output has a decoupling capacitor as well, but also that holds the uh, charge of the output voltage. And also make sure that this gets good solid feedback. So the circuitry in here pulses this inductor, and then when it releases it, you get a as the magnetic field collapses, it goes through this diode to the output, charges up that capacitor to a higher voltage, and when it reaches the 9 volts, it then uh, reaches the feedback voltage threshold as set by these two resistors. So by changing these resistors, you could theoretically change the voltage of that battery. And this is very simple to, similar, should I say, to the chips that Julian Islet featured a while ago, where you've got a little module like this that you plug into your USB port, and it has a set voltage and it basically converts the 5 volts from USB to, in this case, 12 volts. And the only difference between the 9 volts and the 12 volt versions are those little resistors in there that program that. They set the voltage. Very, very common little chip, but it's one of those chips that, because we aren't likely to be using it, it's kind of aimed at the Chinese manufacturing industry, it's quite hard to find the data on that. But the circuitry, you'll see that the decoupling capacitors, the inductor, the diode, and the two sense resistors. If we go back to the circuitry down below and brighten that up again, we can see there's the inductor, there's the diode going through, there's the capacitor and output. Uh, I think this is the capacitor that's being used on, actually, I think those two capacitors are in the output to beef up the volume. And there's the two sense resistors, one going to ground, one going to the output voltage. Um, and then that goes to the sense pin. And then the little component here has the built-in oscillator and the uh, the driving transistor that pulses this inductor, which is connected solidly to the positive connection of the uh, lithium cell. So that just ultimately just boosts it up until it gets that sensed voltage. Um, other things where I was going to actually test something there and I've forgotten what it was. Let's test the charge current. That's what we're going to check. So I shall move this out of the way. I will bring the little circuit module in and I shall test it. I'll bring in a little power bank and we'll use the Ruedeng tester for this and a lead. So this should be about 500 milliamps. Plug this in here, plug it into charge. The batteries are currently about 3.7-ish volts, so about their mid position. Now plug this in. It's about 522 milliamps, so that is pretty much 500 milliamps, which is good because these batteries are each rated 500 milliamps, so they're being charged sort of half C, which is good, good for the batteries. I shall unplug that again. There's the little red LED. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the little red LED? That's showing it's charging, and will go out when it's charged. Quiescent current in standby. If you put this into storage, this battery, I would estimate that it would be six months before the battery was flat because the quiescent current, I tested it at 222 microamps, which is, you know, it's it's not that bad, but that's just the, you know, that's just what it draws to actually keep the circuitry active. So it's not one of these things you're going to take out a drawer about a year or so later and it's going to have a charge, it would be flat, it would have cut out by then. So it's one of these things that if it, it's more suited to regular use that if you were using it in a belt pack on a uh, wireless microphone or something like that and it, the wireless microphone is compatible, this type of uh, battery booster that without actually picking up the noise, then uh, this could, uh, you know, it's one of these things that you'd be charging it before use and then you'd be using it. A little level indicator would have been quite nice, but that is adding too much into a small space. So um, that's quite nice. Um, it is... Quite a nice little circuit indeed. It's a nice layout. It's a nice logical design. And the way it's mounted inside is good as well, with little bits of tape securing the wires down the side, and then two layers, a piece of, uh, let me show you them, a piece of sort of fairly solid, almost like masking tape material for extra sort of rigidity over the end. And then a piece of captain style tape over the end of that for protection. And then everything just laid into that case. Very nice.
Uh, so that is the, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, the battery, and I've just thrown the file away. But uh, anyway, I'll put it in the title of the video, whatever these batteries were. Uh, it doesn't need the label. It's quite nice in a way, just with a case like this, because it's quite a smart little case and it goes together with screws with the visible indicator. But that's nice. It's actually nicer than I was expecting. So thanks again to Kim Sleep for sending that battery. It was well worth taking to bits.